Now we are still really early in 2024 when we're thinking about growing vegetables. However, this week I'm going to be focusing on some root vegetables and in particular bringing them through the letter P and that is my potatoes and my parsnips. Now don't panic, I'm not about to actually plant my potatoes out but there is certainly a few things that I need to do to make sure that they are ready for maybe the first couple of weeks in April. What I am actually going to be direct sowing are my parsnip seeds and these are my parsnip seeds which if you remember back in sort of October time I collected from my own seeds. Now historically I had real difficulties actually growing parsnips and there are loads of different things that I tried. Parsnips do not like to be potted on, their root systems are really really tender. So you can do things like actually germinating them on a piece of tissue paper or you can put them into toilet roll tubes. Those are both very valid ways of actually growing parsnips but I found personally it just didn't work for me. What did work was actually finding the right seeds for my growing conditions. Now there's a few different ways that you can actually do this and I know it's really early but parsnips take a long time to actually germinate and grow. They are real long slow growers. Um, so actually outside making sure that the soil has maybe been warmed up by having some fleece over the top you can start off with actually just doing a little bit of your dibber work and going down maybe about two centimeters and then once you've got a little trough is just get your parsnip seeds and just literally sprinkle them in to the gap and then pinch over the top and pat them down so that's one way and that works absolutely brilliantly and you don't need to worry about having them too thick especially if you've got your own seeds and you've got a lot of them like I have because actually what will happen is as they grow it's going to be sort of survival of the fittest however there is another way if you want to be thinking about those really big juicy huge parsnips and that is getting your dibber now if you take your dibber and actually dip right the way down as far as you can to have a nice deep hole all you're going to do is maybe pop in two or three parsnip seeds into the bottom and then cover it over making sure that you're putting that compost back into the hole now that's actually quite deep but and i know this has worked for a friend of mine who used some of my seeds last year what will happen is those seeds will try to find the light and they'll grow up and then what you'll have is actually a really big parsnip in here now these are going to be my edible parsnips for this year however i do have sort of my nursery parsnip bed right at the other end of the plot which i'm going to sow a few more in i still have in some from last year which are still growing they've still got some growth on them they're going to seed really well but i'm going to make sure that i'm going to replenish those so that i have some more seeds however these ones are strictly for eating so that's my parsnip sorted but what do i need to do with my potatoes So here I am with my potatoes and these are my seed potatoes and this is one of those questions which comes up every single year and it is whether to chit or not to chit and basically chitting just means that you are going to allow some of the stems to start to sprout and grow out of the potato and it just gives a little bit of a head start to your growing season now I have got my main crop here and I have got my first earlies I'm not going to bother with second earlies I usually do but actually I don't really see the point but obviously it's open to your own choice and for my earlies I've actually gone for Pentland Javelin which are beautiful flavoured um, sort of new potato and then for my main crop I've actually gone for King Edwards now the reason I've done this is because I'm after very different yields and size of potatoes really so with the Pentland Javelin when they actually start to chit and all I'm going to do is just lay them out on this tray nicely spaced out so that they're not touching each other and that's really important and that's going to enable them to chit I'll do exactly the same with the King Edwards however come April time and it's going to be the beginning of April before these actually go into the ground with the King Edwards I'm going to probably knock off some of the stems which have developed now the reason for that is I only really want two stems on my King Edwards because if I haven't got as many stems it means the stems I do have are going to really be concentrated and focused on creating big 
potatoes. And I really want to have nice big jacket potatoes or big potatoes that I can use for roasting. With my earlies and my pent and javelin, I actually want them to be fairly small. So when they start to chit and they are ready to go in the ground, I'm going to do that very, very carefully just to try to make sure I'm not going to knock off any of those stems. And I'm going to end up with two very different harvests. Even though I'm going to be actually sowing these out at the same time come April, the main crop are actually going to be the ones which will be in the ground for longer. So again, they're going to have more time to develop and hopefully grow really big. Whereas these ones should be really delicious little new ones. So something to look forward to come April time. And in the meantime, lots of other amazing things to be doing. But most certainly think about sorting out your potatoes, whatever method you decide to do.